Let's look at some examples of diagonalizations. I don't want to spend too much time on this material though, because we've seen that computing a diagonalization is just a matter of finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and we have already done that material. So let's diagonalize this matrix, but we'll skate through some of the details. Um, we'll start by observing that this matrix is triangular. Everything below the diagonal is zero, meaning we don't have to do any work finding the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues of a triangular matrix are the diagonal entries. So 5, 0, negative 2. To do this diagonalization, we need the eigenvalues. These are going to be the elements of D, and we also need eigenvectors. Um, since this is three by three, we need three linearly independent eigenvectors. We're going to get those. It's always true that if we have different eigenvalues, their eigenvectors are linearly independent. So if we have three different eigenvalues, we're guaranteed to be able to find three linearly independent eigenvectors. Finding eigenvectors is simply a matter of solving matrix equations. We should be able to do that. So let's sort of skim through this. When we solve, if we're calling this A, when we solve A minus 5i times V equals equals zero, well, we'll get infinitely many solutions. It doesn't matter which solution we pick. Um, one zero zero is a solution to this matrix equation. A minus zero I times V equals zero. Again, this is just solving a matrix equation using Gauss-Jordan elimination. There are infinitely many solutions. There's one of them. Now we've got negative two. So a plus two i equals zero. Again, infinitely many solutions. Here's one of them. And now we have three linearly independent eigenvectors. Again, they're guaranteed independent because they come from different eigenvalues. And to find P, we simply create the matrix that has these vectors.
vectors as its columns. And to find D, um, note that P and D should correspond to each other in the sense that this first column comes from five. So this first column here will have five in it. The second column comes from zero. So our second diagonal element is zero. The third column comes from negative two. So our third diagonal element is negative two. Um, this diagonalization isn't unique. I mean, just from the work we have done here, this is also a diagonalization. If when we created P, we wrote these columns down in a different order, we'd get a different P and we'd get a different D. Um, similarly, diagonalizations aren't unique because eigenvectors aren't unique. All three of these equations have infinitely many solutions. If I'd gotten different solutions from these, I'd have a different matrix. P.